Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video, we're going to be covering the Open Web UI filter functions. Now, by the end of this video, you'll have a complete understanding of exactly what filter functions are. We'll take a look at a couple of community-written filter functions, and also how you can create your own filter function from scratch without you knowing how to write a single line of code. Now, let's first take a look at a couple of these, and then we'll go and understand exactly what they are. Now, here there is a filter function that's Google Translate. Basically, if you take a look at the vows, here's what it does. It takes in whatever uh, language that the user is providing and it converts it into French. So if I wanted to use this function, all I would do is just enable it and I can go over here to my Open Web UI interface, ask a question, and it's going to convert the response that I get from my large language model into a different language. Let's take a look at another one. So there's this one that's called Privacy Filter. So it automatically detects and redacts personal information before sending it to the large language model. So if I enable this, I can go back into Open Web UI and say something like, repeat after me, my name is John Doe, and my phone number is 615-867-5309. And my email is johndoe at gmail.com. So if I send this to the large language model, it says, okay, John Doe, your phone number is phone redacted, and your email is email redacted. So it actually is redacting all of this information before it even gets sent to the large language model. It's not that like the LLM is redacting it. No, it gets completely filtered before it even gets to the LLM, and that's why they call it filter functions. So let's really understand exactly what they are. Now, if you go over to the Open Web UI documentation, you see over here that what the filter function does is that it modifies the inputs and the outputs. So a quick summary is it tweaks the input data before it reaches the AI model. Similar to what we did with our privacy filter, it tweaks the data before it actually got to the AI model. So we can do things like enhance the clarity, we can add some context, we can sanitize the text, or we can reformat the messages to match specific requirements. So why would we want to do that? Well, we saw the example for sanitized text, where it redacts the emails and the phone numbers before they get sent to the large language model. Now, in this case, the large language model is a LLM that I've downloaded locally on my computer. However, if I'm using maybe some, some sort of an API, maybe like the DeepSeek or the Gemini or the ChatGPT one, I don't want to send in all of my personal information, maybe like my phone numbers, my credit card details, my social security numbers, and they use that data to then train their models. So in that case, it, it makes sure that that information does not get sent to the large language model. Now, the other use cases also enhance clarity. So... I do have another function that we can take a look at that would help elaborate on this a little bit further. So the function is called the prompt refiner. What it does is that it enhances the user prompts by adding context, structure, and clarity before sending it to the LLM. So what it does is that first it tries to detect if the user is asking to do things like creative writing, translation, comparison, analysis, or code generation. Now, depending on what the task is, it's going to modify the prompt accordingly. So if it's a code generation task, it asks the LLM to do things like provide code that's well organized and properly commented. Uh, code should be efficient, readable, and follow best practices. And then also consider the requirements and then approach and then finally implement the solution. So it creates a set of all of these different criteria before it even gets sent to the LLM and it basically refines our prompt. So now if I go over here and ask the LLM a question, maybe something like write me a function to invert a link list, uh, it's going to not only give me the output here in terms of what the function is, it's also going to tell me, well, what were the requirements, what was the approach, uh, what was the implementation. So it is going to give me this response in a well-structured format, no matter what type of question that I ask it. So even if I create a new chat and say that I, in this case, I choose a different model, maybe something like the Quen 2.53 build parameter model. So write me a Python function to inverse a linked list. We'll see here that again, not only is it going to give us the functions, it's also going to tell us what the requirements are, the approach, the implementation. Uh, it does give us all of these things in a slightly different format, but we can see that it does follow the same kind of structure. So that's the goal over here. So we can actually refine all of our functions before they get sent to the large language model. Now that's the prompt refiner one. There's something else that we could do as well. So I have the other one over here for parameter optimizer. How this works is we know that large language models perform differently based on settings that you provide to them. So for example, higher values for temperature means that the model is going to be a lot more creative. And um, 
when we have lower values for temperature, the model is going to be a lot more deterministic. So suppose that if I have a creative writing task, well, in this case, I want the temperature values to be a lot higher. If I want to have a code generation task, I want to have the temperature values lower. It also modifies other things like the frequency penalty as well as the presence penalty. So this means that I don't want to have frequent terms when I'm doing creative writing. However, for code generation, I don't really care about that. It's okay if I have frequent uh, terminology and that's fine, I would, it's very normal. So for something like this, I could also use another type of a filter function. Again, it's gonna detect creative writing, code generation, technical explanation based on a predefined set of regex rules that we create. So that's another example of um, the input that's going to be modified before it gets sent to the large language model. Now, over here, we can see that there are two other use cases. So intercept the model outputs. So in this case, it captures the AI's responses as they're generated. So things like real-time modifications, we can filter out sensitive information or format the output, maybe for better readability. Over here, we have another one for modify the model outputs. So adjust the AI's response after its process, before it gets shown to the user. So that is what we saw over here when we took a look at the Google Translate API. The way that it was working is that it actually uses the Google Translate API. So it takes the message that came from the large language model and then it applied the Google Translate. Um, and because it's free, so it didn't really need to provide any sort of API key or anything like that. Now, an important piece of information to remember is the fact that filter functions, they're not standalone models. They're simply tools that enhance or transform the data that's traveling to and from the models. So if you haven't watched the video on pipe functions, basically what a pipe function is, is that it allows you to actually create a new model that you can then select and it adds in a set of custom logic on that one. So if you haven't watched that video, I'm gonna link it in the description. Definitely take a look at that one as well. So with the whole idea behind filter functions is that we can simply modify the input that gets sent to the model as well as the output that we receive back from the model. So let's take a look at some community uh, filter functions. So if you go to openwebui.com, you can select see all, and we can see that there are some pipe functions available here. There are some action functions as well. Uh, we care about the filter functions at this point. So there's this one for artifacts v2 that's inspired by the Claude artifacts. There is a filter function over here for auto memory. So it automatically stores relevant information in the memory database. There's a filter function over here for auto tool filter. So if we take a look at this one, what does it actually do? It says a filter that pre-processes a user query to match relevant tools and populates the request with matching tool IDs. So if you scroll down, you can kind of see exactly what the code is doing. So you can scroll a little bit more. So it says if a tool doesn't match the query, return an empty list. And I think over here in line 56, this kind of tells us exactly what's happening. So it looks at all of the tools that are available for the model. So if you go over to your Open Web UI interface and then select Workspace and then select Tools, you can see that right now I have three tools available. One is for Web Search, one is for Stock Reporter, one is for Generate Images. So it's going to send all three of these tools to the large language model so that the LLM can then determine what tool it should use to answer this question. Remember that tools are just scripts that the large language model can execute. So if you haven't watched that video on tools, I'm also going to link that in the description as well. So now that we have seen how we can um, use community functions, we can basically select get, import to open web UI, and then hit save. And now we also have access to this um, available function. So let me, I guess, edit or remove the numerical piece of information. And there we go. So the function created successfully, and then we would have to enable the function and also enable it globally. So now, no matter uh, what sort of uh, model that I'm going to be using, it is going to be able to understand exactly what tool it should also be using. So that is if you wanted to use a community-based uh, filter function. So what if you actually wanted to create your own from scratch? Uh, this is where a lot of the fun part comes in. So here's what you could do. Well, you can copy the entire description over here off the filter functions and then paste that into Claude. So this is an example of what I did. So I simply pasted the entire documentation on filter functions, and I also provided some context of an existing filter function. That's the Google Translate filter. So I pasted these two things. And then I said, filter functions, uh, documentations, and example function attached. Use this to create a prompt refinement function 
that basically takes the prompt that the user provided and then refines the prompt, makes it significantly better before it gets sent to the model. So this is that same prompt refinement example that we've seen before. If you take a look over here at the code, this is what it provided back to us. So all I simply did from here is copy the entire code that it gave me. And I went over to my open web UI interface. And then within the interface, I could go over here to my admin panel, select functions, create a new function and pasted everything that Claude gave me. Uh, all I needed to do then was just add in a function name as well as a description. And then I could start using it. So just like how I did this, I also provided the same thing when I asked it to create a privacy filter function that automatically filters personal information to the model. And then here is, uh, it's a full script for parameter optimization. It adjusts the model parameters based on the query type detection. So let's try to actually create our own filter function as well. So I'm gonna go over here and copy the documentation that I have from Open Web UI on the filter functions. So let's do that first. And I'm going to say, now create a filter function that modifies the output. And in this case, because I'm actually in the same chat, I don't need to provide it the full information um, that, provide, that modifies the output. Basically, it should remove all emojis uh, that I receive back from the model. So this is a type of function that actually works um, not at the input phase, but this is on the model output stage. So here it's creating this function. It says here's a Python script for a filter function. It's going to remove all of the emojis from the model response. So let's copy this. It looks like it is, oh, actually it is in process. So it's processing the messages, only process assistant messages, and there we go. So I'm gonna copy this and then go over here. And in the functions, let's create this function. I'm gonna paste the information. Um, let's give this function a name. So in this case, the function name is going to be emoji remover and then a description. So it removes all emojis from the model responses. So to test it out, I'm gonna save this and it says function created successfully. Now, before we actually start using this function, let's actually test it out just to see if we can get actually some em emoticons back first. So um, can you give me a smiley face emoji? Uh, let's see if the Gemma uh, 3 one build parameter model is actually going to give us some emojis here. There we go. So the smiley face emoji, that's perfect. Okay, so now let's actually go over here in the admin panel, create, uh, go to our functions and then enable this function and say it's enabled globally. So it's going to remove all emojis from the model responses. So let's go back over here to our chat. And let me just also give it the same exact prompt that it gave over here. So can you give me a smiley face emoji? And let's see if we are actually getting some emojis back here from the model. So, okay, let's break it down, understand the emojis. And we can see over here that we are not actually getting any sort of emoji icons. So the smiley face emoji officially known as this is globally recognized, etc. So in this case, it doesn't give us any sort of uh, emojis versus over here we can see like what all of these examples were. So I can even ask it um, just to be sure, can you give me some example emojis? Let's see if it is going to be able to give us some examples over here. And there we go. So we can see it says that basic emotions and expressions, and it is trying to give us the emojis over here. We can see with the commas and everything, but because we filtered them out, we don't actually see them. So. That is a filter function that we just created that modifies the model output as it gets sent back over to us. So if you take a little bit of a deep dive, and I promise this is the last part of the section, uh, just a little bit of a deep dive into the Python code. Because I know in the last video, some people actually wanted to understand some of the Python code. So basically what it's doing over here is that we have the class filter. Um, we initialize. now. In it, we start off with valve. So in this case, it's an optional configuration whether or not we want to have a valve. If you want a valve, you can just simply create it. If you don't want a valve, then we can just leave this blank. Now, the first part is the inlet function. So that's a part of the input pre-processing, right? So that's where we can modify all of the input that goes in. Now, over here, it says that we can modify and return the uh, body and that's what the LLM is going to work with. 
why would you want to do this? Well, you can do for formatting data, sanitizing the input, and it also provides some examples. So say that we want to add some system context. This is what we would do. So it's context message and then role and content. Um, and then based on this, it says any user input, like what are some good dinner ideas, now carries the Italian theme because that's what we've set in the system context. So you are helping the user prepare an Italian meal. So now the user has, or now the model actually has a little bit more context when it's trying to solve this problem. Here's another example. So for cleaning the inputs or removing any odd characters, this is going to strip out some of the characters, which um, basically is going to take the sentence, how can I debug this issue, exclamation, explanation, explanation, and then change it to how can I debug this issue. So it's basically stripping the triple explanation marks. The hook the, or the stream hook was introduced in Open Web UI 0.5.17. So what this allows us to do is actually do our uh, processing on the output, especially if the output is going to be streamed to us. So this allows us to modify this output that's going to be streamed in real time. So it's not that it needs to wait for the entire model to give an output. It's just going to be able to give us an output in real time. So in this case, it actually is the same examples of filtering out the emojis from the stream data. So we can see how it works over here. In action, it's basically replacing the smiley face emoji with just blank. Now, we could replace this blank with something else. So for example, we could just say some text like emoji was here or, or whatever. And then finally, we have the outlet function. So this is after the model gives the entire conversation, and then we can actually um, have it do something. So strip out sensitive API responses if you don't want the user to see. So maybe some information that got presented back over to us, and we don't want to include that in our response. Maybe we want to, we don't want to display this information back over to us. Well, we can strip it out after it also gets processed. So that's another thing that we can do as well. So there are some more examples that are provided over here, but what I encourage you to do is to try out a couple of different uh, functions, maybe even create your own. Think about w a scenario in which you would want to modify the input or you would want to modify the output. And if you can think about some scenarios, maybe work with Claude, see if you can come up with the function. And if you have some interesting ideas, then please uh, talk about them in the comment section. I'd love to see some of your ideas and even test them out. That's it for this video. I really appreciate you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.